Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome back to another Hot Off The Press recommendation with this one being Hinterlands Who's Who. Now this one is the beaver, obviously Canada's favourite animal, a very world-renowned animal for Canada, and so let's just see what this whole thing is about. When did this come out? There was a time when beaver lodges like this one and the busy beavers that build them had almost disappeared from Canada because of over-trapping. But the beaver, who will always be associated with Canada's early days, yeah. has been reintroduced into many areas, and it's made a successful comeback. Look at that. The beaver That's builds so dams impressive. because he has to store his winter's food in water deep enough not to freeze. Oh. With all the wood cutting that the beaver has to do, it's fortunate that his incisor teeth never stop growing. Really? That's awesome. Look at him go. <laughs> Well, it is certainly a short and sweet little video clip, but honestly, I learned a decent amount of information given the fact there was only about three lines of information in the entire thing. Firstly, I learned that they almost became extinct. I can only imagine from trapping because of the fur pelts. Then I was just blown away by the size of that dam. I mean, I guess you do need a decently high dam. Like if uh, humans were building a dam, it does have to be decently high, especially considering they need to be able to trap a decent amount of water, which I guess leads on to the second point that I learned is the fact that they need to be able to store their food for the winter under the ice. I mean, to be honest, I don't actually know what a beaver eats. Is it a carnivore? Is it a herbivore? Is it an omnivore? What is it? Ah, okay, so they are actually herbivores. That makes sense. It definitely would have been my first choice out of a lot of them, but I wasn't sure if I was getting it mixed up and confused because I was picturing them with a lot of plants in their mouth, but I wasn't sure if that was because they were eating them or building a dam out of them. But honestly, I think the most impressive thing is the fact that their front teeth never stop growing. I mean, that definitely makes sense as to why they're always pictured in cartoons or even in any kind of thing with massive buck teeth. I mean, they definitely have them, but the fact that they never stop growing, how do you get those kind of genes and DNA? I mean, they're obviously not them because you'd wear them out and that'd be the end of the beaver in about two generations maybe but it does make me wonder so many other things about these teeth you know how big or small are they how soft or hard is the enamel honestly how fast do they grow what kind of materials can they get through there are so many questions around them i mean i'm sure all of that is just general canadian knowledge but like already proved i had no idea with so many things about this incredible animal that is so smart as well so you've got to give it to the beaver i understand why it's just the heritage animal The loon is also called the Great Northern Diver yep. because of its ability to dive and swim long distances underwater. Wow. It does this to catch the small fish which are its main food or simply to evade its enemies. Mm. The loon's sweet. legs are so far back on its body that movement on land is slow and awkward. Right. So the nests are very close to water. Look at it. It's like a Loch Ness. It's such a classic animal. The calls of the loon, and it has several calls in its repertoire, have come to symbolize Canada's wilderness because of their lonely, haunting quality. Ooh, now I want to hear more. Hang on a second, that's the loon? What? I had no idea. I just would have expected that to be kind of an affected wolf, or that one sounds a little bit more of a, like a bird, but wow. Damn, I can certainly understand why when I typed up loon calls, one of the videos that popped up was why Hollywood is in love with his bird's call, and like I said, I can't even believe that was a bird. It sounds more, well, honestly, at first, like a wolf. Oh, man. That is insane. That is definitely haunting. And so to be walking through the Canadian forest with who knows what in there, and especially with that going off in the background, you would be freaking out. Which is honestly a little bit ridiculous once you actually know what that sound is coming from because, well, like you said, its legs are so far back it can barely move on land. I mean, why would that be? Maybe it's just better for swimming, almost like humans and flippers instead of just being on the bottom, you're actually at the back. But no, otherwise, like I said, it is such an iconic look of an animal, just that semi submersion that long beak to be able to dart through the water. And of course, that is just because I've seen a loony so many times now, just through all the videos I've watched. However, coming back to the video itself, one of the major things that caught me off guard is the fact that he said it has predators. And I mean, yes, it's it's a bird and so if you're in Australia you might have crocodiles and I don't know what else things like that they're just going to be snapping it up literally but what in Canada is going to be its predator especially one where diving is the main option you know like I said if it's going to be a crocodile then that's not going to be your best choice and I guess if it came from the skies like a hawk a big bird then maybe maybe going underwater would be best but otherwise what land animal is going to be going after a bird in the water 
I mean, I guess once again, something like this is probably just Canadian general knowledge, but I am now wondering where is it located within Canada? Because obviously, let's say the bald eagle, that is kind of North America, not just Canada. And so how is the loon only really Canada? I've never heard of the US having a loon. And on top of that, I would also love to know when these videos originally came out. I mean, the description did not tell me, but there are a few hints that are leading me to believe that it's not the most new thing in the world, given the 4 by 3 ratio, the lack of pixels, and even just the narration of it is so 60s or 70s. Either way, I definitely do like the entire formatting of it. It is short, it is sweet, it gets the point across, but also gives you plenty of information just within a minute, and I feel as though that is something that Canada does really well. Flute. The northern tundra is the home of one of the most powerful and beautiful members of the owl family, the snowy owl. Right. The that. female is not as brilliant white as the male. Her what? plumage is barred and makes her less conspicuous against the tundra. The snowy owl's major source of food is the lemming. The availability of the lemming has a major effect on the owl population. Right. She lays her eggs in a dent in the ground, which she scrapes herself. <laughs> a dent. Incubation starts as soon as the first egg is laid. So the chicks hatch one after another, and there can be quite a difference in size between the oldest and the youngest. Why? Striking features of the snowy owl are the feathery legs. Even the claws are covered with dense white feathers. Wow. And the large yellow eyes with their composed stare. He is certainly not wrong about that, is he? My goodness, I feel as I could just stare into those eyes all day long. They're almost angelic or godly, just this penetrating yellow. I mean, the pure white surround definitely just makes it have that pop, but even when it was back here, you can just see these eyes. Just, it looks like it's just staring at you constantly. However, there was just no aggression in that gaze whatsoever. You know, some of these birds and owls just have such piercing eyes, but they look like they're just about to take the talons and rip your heart out. But that is just so peaceful. I guess that's like I was saying, just that angelic kind of eyes. I mean, to be fair, looking at a few more of these, maybe it was just the one they were filming because a couple of these, geez, let's take this guy, for example, that is just death in white. But no, overall, that is one very majestic animal, even down to the fact that it has feathers on its feet. I mean, honestly, that sounds like it's a bit of a hassle to deal with. I don't feel as though you'd be able to use your talons as well and I don't really know why they would have feathers on their feet. Maybe it's a silence thing? I, I really don't know. I also can't imagine that it would have anything to do with the eggs given the fact that if this one particular bird needs it then surely there's going to be a whole host of other birds that would need it and none do as far as I'm aware. And I mean speaking of the eggs, once again nature is providing us such a little nuanced thing you know I don't have any idea why it would be starting the incubation period of all the eggs as soon as the first one is hatched. I mean I don't even know how you would even manage that but hey I guess if turtles can have their own temperature controlled eggs then the snowy owl is allowed to have this one i mean i'm certainly just hoping that the population hasn't decreased too much since this video was made because they seem to be saying it was kind of endangered given its diet and prey and everything like that even back when this video was made and so i can't imagine the snowy owl with everything going on is doing too well at the moment but i might be proven wrong fingers crossed either way once again we have a brilliant little snapshot video that over the course of one minute just managed to teach me so many things about hedwig's backstory Moose, lynx, wolves, martens, and other wildlife make their home in the boreal forest. Boreal. It's also a summer home for over 30% of North America's songbirds. Wow. Canada's boreal covers more than half of this country's landmass and is part of an Jeez. even larger global ecosystem. The size and diversity of the boreal are awesome. It's even more amazing when we think of all the life it supports. Yeah. With its trees, grass, and wetlands, the boreal supports insects, plants, and animals, as well as rural and aboriginal communities. Yeah, right. So how do we ensure that the ecosystem in the boreal forest continues to meet the needs of those who rely on it? Balance. Yeah, That's exactly. right. By balancing the needs of nature with the needs of people and communities, we can continue to support Canadian wildlife for generations to come. And that's just a start. To learn more about the wonders of the boreal forest, visit hww.ca. Fair enough. Honestly, it was a nice pivot away from animals. I mean, I'll learn about the animals. That's completely fine. But it's very interesting to hear them talking about also just the forest and that entire ecosystem as well. Because for goodness sake, even just to take one particular statistic out of it, the fact that it has 30% of North America's songbirds in the summer is insane. Like, that's no small feat. I mean, like I said, I would love to know when this one was made because it just feels newer between the font and even just the 16 by 9. That's a massive giveaway as well. I mean, sadly, we didn't gain any resolution, so I can't really appreciate all these signs 
sites as well as I possibly could. But like I said, even the families of bears, look at them, all three of them, and all, kind of all four of them, but all three of them go up to the same pose at the same time. So synchronized, it's beautiful. And look, I was just about to search up where this forest actually is, but that is definitely not necessary because like you said, it covers so much of North America and Canada in particular that you're just going to see basically Canada and North America come up, I'm sure. And so there is just no doubt about it that with all of these videos, as well as all the Heritage Minutes, Canada just does so well with educating the masses about both the country they live in and the planet they live on, just one minute at a time. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I am going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you are watching, then make sure to go check out any other ones I've done. Also, make sure to go check out the original videos down in the description below. Or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.